ancient aliens. While you're just doing weekend chores with your boyfriend, or is it fiancé now, I'm gorging again on the History Channel, trying to convince myself I might meet someone at the gym. If only I could levitate from my sofa with the same ease and grace Chinese myths assigned to flying dragons. Some PhD with a flock of seagulls haircut insists were aircraft awing naive ancestors. They just didn't have a name for it. I didn't have a name for it either, the alien sensation that descended that afternoon. Your boyfriend, my longtime friend, finally introduced his new beau. A handshake charged like the jolt that same PhD suggests was not the lightning of Zeus, scalding humans from Mount Olympus, perhaps for a vice like coveting, but a glowing beam, some otherworldly force from some bird thing landing from beyond. The aliens, suddenly all the men I believed I had loved, dwarfed now from the top of a pyramid I couldn't recall climbing, always falling short, not enough, not it, whatever it was. I just never had a name for it, until you offered yours, and I was struck dumb, a stargazing primitive, willing to carve your likeness into cavern walls, learn your language, spend a whole lifetime flattening the earth into a landing pad, in case you might visit again. Homosexuality. So long at the bottom of the well, occasional shafts of sunlight disturbing the darkness, my eyes calibrated to decipher shadows for other nocturnal creatures. Always there were none. When the rope finally lowered, I was so delirious with fever, I nearly looped my neck with it instead of my waist, expecting to be booby-trapped at the top. It's okay, I'll get you out of there. The voice familiar, my own? Maybe. I'd never really heard what I sounded like, unless this was the trap. Wait, too late. He was pulling me through the well's mouth, gathering me into his arms. Breathe, breathe. Everything seemed jeweled with a glare. Even his badge, engraved with my name. Preoccupied by the charge I inherited, I almost forgot my note scratched nightly into the well's stone walls. By the time you read this, scars in my fingerprints. Toast. Once a woman who lost her mother told me the story of a guru rushing to satisfy his dying mentor's last wish. For bread, you see, the woman said, if he died with an unfulfilled desire, big or small, he'd risk reincarnation. She believed her mother's dementia and almost infancy had completed such a cycle. Her mother, never truly nurtured, finally cared for like a baby. Later, my sister shared my mother's last words. Get Michael. I didn't make it in time. For months, I've dreamed of a curtain, no window, just the curtain, hanging in the center of an empty room, heavy velvet, dark gray, swaying in a breeze I can see but not feel. I think my reincarnation's inevitable. At night, I whisper, shall we be friends? Next time, cousins? How about sisters? Though I am certain, I will be her mother.